Welcome guys to another episode of Kerbal Space Program 2. In today's episode, we're going to be launching a satellite array with Starship. Yeah, because uh, that's, uh, that's a thing that's launching soon, so, you know, hype or whatever. Anyway, kept it a little bit of the launch here and then I'm going to fade it out because I, it, this, it's, this is actually recorded after the update. So here we are, we're moving on to our time lapse section. So this is actually after the patch. Yeah, the patch happened. I, I meant to release this video last week and then got sidetracked and uh, well, it's here now. So what did we get in the patch? Well, performance. The performance is better than it was before. Uh, for my system, it didn't quite quadruple my FPS, but for some people it did, so good for them. Uh, what the patch really did for me is improve frame times rather than frames. When we get back to some live sections later in the video, you might notice it's... If you look in the corner, the FPS is still low. It's usually 20, about average, really. It's about average 20. Here's stage separation, by the way. I did not recover that booster because I could not be bothered, honestly. <laughs> Let's just say recovering the starship was hard enough, but, uh... We did it in the end. We did it in the end. Anyway, uh, so basically, uh, it improved frame times more than it improved frame rate, which manifests itself as smoothness, which you'll notice uh, later on when we have some live sections. So uh, here we are. We're getting our uh, apoapsis up to geostationary altitude, and uh, now we're going to quickly cut over and do some math. Yeah, so uh, all these values are calculated using the exact same uh, stats as... Uh, KSB1, so clearly nothing has changed because this worked the way, uh, the way this is, so, uh, also tell me in the comment section if you guys want to see a tutorial on how I do my, uh, satellite arrays in Kerbal Space Program, because, uh, I don't know, I could see myself doing that, be kind of fun, anyway, uh, one problem with, um, one problem with, uh, KSB2 is that there's not as much precision, so I'm really hoping we get some kind of Kerbal Engineer Redux version for this, uh, for this version of the, uh, the game soon. Also, here's another thing. Maneuver node. It's actually sane now. It's not arrows. You know what you're actually changing. I could see why they went with arrows initially, because, you know, simplicity, but I don't know. I like having it relate to your, uh, your markers down in the, uh, down at the bottom of the screen. It just makes it feel better. Anyway, um... You don't really get precision with uh, this. So if you notice, you get 2,871 kilometers, but geostationary altitude is like 668 meters. I think it's 60, 666, 663 meters as well. So it should be 2,853,663, I think. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what geostationary altitude is. And the problem is, KSP2 doesn't give you that precision. In KSP1, you got all the precision that you could want. And if you got KER, it went down to even two decimal places in terms of meter. Which means your satellites would essentially never drift. The issue I see with this is that eventually you're gonna get satellite drift. Because your satellites could be up to like 500 meters apart. Apoapsis, periapsis on either side. Which, it's not a huge difference, but if you're time warping say i don't know for like a hundred years when you're going interstellar it will definitely be noticeable that your satellites are drifting out of position so uh so that's uh that's one of the problems i think we should get more position it's not like we don't have room on the interface i mean look at it <laughs> there's like another inch on the screen for that also oh, here's the uh, first satellite we are currently launching and it's worked yeah it's great uh an interesting thing about this is that it still kind of borks out when you switch vessels. I don't know why I had to quick save to fix this. Luckily, quick save fixed this, and you it looks like a landed state bug has been patched out, which is great because that means I can quick save in peace. Maybe we can retry that Drez mission. I mean, uh, that uh, Mun mission, you know, in air quotes. Also, here's a funny thing that happened. Look what happened to the fuel lines and the struts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm not sure why the struts decided to have a stroke here 
I, I quick save soon and it fixes it in the next quick save. But they just decided that they were gonna have a stroke for some reason. I don't I don't know why, but they did. Okay, <laughs> so that's uh that's a thing. Also, for some reason when I copied some of these satellites, the engine was like offset. It's really weird. It's it's just one of those other bugs that needs to be ironed out, I guess. <laughs> See if you notice that uh, that ant engine. It's not in the middle. It's like off to the side, weirdly. Luckily, I put there's enough reaction wheels that it doesn't really matter. But still, it's annoying. Here, got that again. So I had to quick save again. Uh, other thing that you might notice here is uh, I can actually read the fuel gauges. That's right. They changed the fuel gauges to be actual bars instead of like dotted lines, which is like so much better. Because, <laughs> once again, precision. And I'm honestly not sure why they went with a more precise interface. Because when you're doing interstellar missions, I mean, yeah, the sphere of influence of a star is huge. But compared to interstellar distances, that's like tip of a needle. But like at the end of a football field, it's like crazy. Also, uh... When we did our last satellite here, you might have just noticed that we borked something. Uh, it looks like the eccentricity bug is still here and still well, if you noticed there. Also, here's a thing that happened. Um, I decoupled and it launched me out at like Mach 3 for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. It's a perfectly uh, balanced game. A lucky thing about changing eccentricity is it doesn't actually change your orbital period. So we can fix this by just... Uh, having a burn where the two orbit lines intersect here. Uh, it's not perfect. Um, we don't end up actually getting a perfectly square here, but it's fine. <laughs> it could have been worse, could have been way out of phase, and then there's nothing, as you can see, kind of here. It's not kind of in line with the other three. It's unfortunate, but eh, it's a first attempt for Caribbean Space Program 2, and hey, I mean, it worked this much, so that's a thing. I would still consider this to be a win. Here's to just final circularization of our, uh, of our orbit here. And uh, then I quick save for some reason. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know. Other thing you might notice is that instead of a Kerbal up there in the portrait, it used to be empty. Now we have a little uh, Jeb circuit board, which is uh, fun. <laughs> ah, that's, that's good. That's good. So now we're going to get into the uh, actual starship starship part of this so i did a little cut here because i did a bunch of failed attempts at this uh i have no idea how to get to the ksc at all also here's a bug uh don't enter the atmosphere in time warp it will nuke your craft this happens like one or two times here's a couple attempts at landing i think this is what this is i don't don't quote i'm a professional <laughs> anyway um the one thing you might also notice is, uh, why is there so much more yellow on this craft than the other ones? And I, I somehow managed to invert the, the colors. Uh, this is a new save, so I probably just did it backward. That's, uh, I think I've made the detail color black and the main color yellow. It should be the other way around. It's not, but, yeah. <laughs> that was another failed attempt there. So here we go in, and I time warp too much and blow up the craft. <laughs> And because I took a quick save, I have to go to the menu. Having access to all your quick saves is very nice. I will say that. Also, if you notice there, uh, it broke immediately. So I had to revert again and fix it. It was annoying. <laughs> um, so now I have this, which is the re-entry section. I think... I think this is the last, uh, last attempt I made, and it was actually successful. I think. Yeah, I think so. Alright. Uh, so, the way- so, here's the thing about this, alright? In my opinion, KSB-2 needs another type of wing. So, right now, we have wings, control surfaces, and, uh... Elevons, I think? I don't know. It's one of the- one of them has a flap, one of them is a flap, one of them is a wing with a control surface. What we need really is just an aileron type that just kind of hinges along the side. So see how these are kind of rotating around a point in the middle 
of like they're rotating up and down what i really want them is to fold up and down kind of along the length of the craft uh this is not only because right now we're just kind of flying the starship like a plane backwards but like a plane it's not really how a starship works and if we had proper folding kind of if they folded up instead of kind of rotating like that then i could have done that also for making like realistic planes um making elevators in the back is generally more realistic like if you want to say say you want to recreate like a spitfire or something the elevator in the back isn't integrated into the control surface it's like half off of the thing and it's like its own section so you can't really recreate that right now with the current thing so i think we do need one more type of control surface that folds around what it's connected to if that makes any sense instead of like this way they instead of like rotating up and down kind of like it's it it kind of folds up against the side of the craft that's kind of what i'm getting at if you saw it i don't have the op like if you if, if it folded like starship wings basically <laughs> Anyway, uh, the way I basically went about landing this is, uh, uh, you have a basic falling speed of probably 75 meters per second in my experience here. So, and this is sped up two times right now, but <clears throat> basically I just kind of went down and then don't pull up too hard because you will rip the wing off. And then if you try to quick save, it will fall off. Ask me how I know that. <laughs> So I really did only have one attempt to get this right, honestly. But uh, these landing pads are very nice because they allow us to do things like land on them. So here I'm just kind of I'm doing some like weird space shuttle style S turns, but they're vertical instead of horizontal because you know that's how the space shuttle works. <laughs> it did a bunch of S spins or not S spins. Wow, that's not what is it? Split S maneuvers basically. That's and then we just, that's basically how I kept my speed under control on the way down. We have 400 meters per second, so I theoretically could have come down at that speed and we still would have been fine. But, I mean, it's a starship. I want to make it as much of a starship as I could. Other problem, though, about having it be slower is that it tends to lose any yaw authority because it doesn't have any yaw authority. It just kind of keeps itself passively stable, but when you start turning and trying to make minute little adjustments at the back, it doesn't really work. It's annoying, but eh. So here I've decided we're going to land on the uh, third landing pad from the end here. So here we uh, activate, and this is actually uh, live right here. This is not sped up or anything. So you can notice, despite the frame rate only being like 13 meters per second, it feels like it could be like 30. Which is very, it, that consistency in the frame times is so much better than the lag we had before. I would not consider this great, but it's better. Way better. And then here's our, uh, our flip birth at 30 meters per second. I know, look at this, it's so intense, right? But hey, it works. Other thing about flying it backwards, all your controls are inverted, so uh, good luck. <laughs> SAS had a horrible time controlling it. That's why I made most of the set without actually having SAS enabled, which was interesting. <laughs> so, and touchdown! Yeah. I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so we landed it. Not quite in the center. We're kind of only half on the landing pad, but uh, hey, we did it. So that's a, that's a starship, guys. I landed it. And uh, geostationary rays. They are possible, but. Are they great? I don't know. But uh, if you enjoyed this episode, make sure you continue to watch more of my content. And if you really like it, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button and ring the notification bell. That's all from me, guys, today. Bye!